Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. Well, I've been away on a vacation and I got back. That's why I missed the last show. I went to that Burning Man festival in、uh, north of Reno, about 90 miles. In, it's in a big salt flat. And if you don't wear good shoes, you'll get like dried out skin. But there's the. Word that's not translated correctly. It says, "No one buys or sells without the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand." And you can see that the Greek word "karagma"、uh, it means it means the impress on the coin or stamped money coin. Well, there's bad news. This guy Bloomberg, the mayor of New York, was saying on the news today that that people are getting. Upset about this economy. It's like a really depressing economy. One thing I said when I went on my vacation was, I was going to ask everybody I came into contact with whether this economy is affecting them. And、uh, I don't know. I had one guy say it. He, it hasn't affected him, but and none of none of that's on the next day. And I says, well, how about any of your friends or anything? I says, I find it hard to believe that nobody you know has. Been affected by this economy. When he said he was retired, I mean, maybe he doesn't have any friends. But another person I ran into,、uh, young man, said he was working for Sikorsky, and he'd put the servers, the computer servers, in these helicopters. And I don't know how many crew members they had, but he knew everything about it. And they laid him off of that job, and now he's struggling with some other kind of things. And he never went to college, but he's good with these computers. And then I ran into some really dumb girl at the beach, and、uh, it was a nude beach, and、uh, she at least took her top off. But uh, she uh, first thing she asked me was what my sign was, and、uh, there wasn't much of a conversation there. But like, I just don't see.、Uh, I'm pretty pessimistic about the way things are going. I think there was an article I read that said that like. What was it? Seventy-five percent of the young people, seventeen to twenty-four, are not physically fit, or they haven't graduated from high school, or they have a criminal record, so that they can't go into the military or the army, at least. Or, but anyway, so the way things are going, it's like with the peak oil, we're running out of oil, and there's really no substitute for oil.、Um, you know, natural gas. I don't. Converting all the cars to natural gas and all this driving we have—it's、uh, if there was enough natural gas, they wouldn't be fracking this, this, trying to get it out of Pennsylvania and all these different places. They think it might have been causing those earthquakes, and it pollutes the water around there when they try to get this natural gas out. And they have these tar sands up in Canada, but it takes a lot of water and. Energy. They have to heat the ground up and various other things. And then, you know, with these batteries, if you're going to have an electric car, they they don't really have the right、um, batteries yet. And if they do, they need these rare earth elements that only China has. And then nobody really knows how long these batteries are going to last. And that's the most expensive part of the these vehicles. Plus, the price isn't right. They have to be subsidized. And、uh, of course, the coal that we're burning pollutes, so that increases global warming. These people that don't believe in global warming are just not really looking at the evidence. There, there's like the hottest summer here in Tucson, and the tornadoes and hurricanes we're having, and, and the drought in Texas, and all these different things are happening. The polar ice caps are melting, and the glaciers are melting. It's like they won't even be able to call Glacier National Park、uh, uh, Glacier National Park anymore because they're all drying up. They found like this really old skeleton in in the Alps. Some guy I don't know he was maybe two thousand years ago was up there hunting, and、uh, somehow ended up dead and. And the, covered in snow, and the glacier melted back enough, and somebody found his his、uh, body up there, and they found his little hunting kit with him, and、uh, I guess it was pretty high up. But、uh, 
Well, 9-11 happened, and of course that's a, a big fraud that the George Bush and Dick Cheney and all these different people, these, these neocons, got us going into to steal this oil. And like I said, you know, we're running out of oil, so we have to uh, secure these supplies. And Saddam Hussein was like a renegade, and he didn't like America. He didn't like Israel either. But uh, he was going to start charging euros for the oil instead of dollars. He was going to screw America because America supports Israel. And uh, so they're <clears throat> talking in the UN about doing, uh, they're going to, uh, Palestine is going to try to get statehood. And, uh, you know, I mean, the United States recognizes this new government in Libya. I mean, they don't really know what those people are going to do in Libya. The, they think that the leaders are like Al-Qaeda. You know, and um, so uh, <clears throat> that guy, Ahmadinejad, is the Ira Iranian president is going to be speaking at the UN. I really like to uh, hear that. I, Gaddafi spoke before the UN, I think it was last year, and I made a video of it. He mentioned uh, the Martin Luther King assassination and the Kennedy assassination, and he said that we need an investigation of this. Uh, well, and, um, of course, the CIA killed John Kennedy, and uh, Kennedy was uh, trying to get us out of the Vietnam War, and, uh, and Israel caused, uh, tried to sink the USS Liberty during the Six Day War, and uh, what was that? Uh, I always get it mixed up. Is it 78, the Six Day War, or was it 68? No, it couldn't have been 68, but whatever it was, they tried to sink this, this spy ship. It was a United States spy ship that they had in the, uh, just off the coast of Egypt. And um, so uh, they were going to try to sink it, and, and Johnson was the president then. And uh, so the, some crew member on this ship, I'm trying to find this bumper sticker I have about the USS Liberty. They, uh, the Israelis napalmed this boat and they had heat-seeking missiles that took out their antennas so they couldn't communicate. But one of the antennas was, was not working, so they had it shut off and, and the missiles didn't get that one. But the uh, radio man pieced together this antenna and got an SOS out to an aircraft carrier nearby and the aircraft carrier Start. I think uh, the aircraft they sent out had nuclear bombs on it, and they were going to the rescue of this USS Liberty. But um, if um, the, the Israelis would have not managed, if the Israelis would have managed to take all those antennas out, they never would have gotten that SOS out, and they would have sunk the ship and killed everybody on board, and then blamed it on Egypt. And then, and then the United States would have gone to war against Egypt. And at that time, the Soviet Union had advisors in Egypt, and they didn't like the president, Nasser, who was, um, I guess he was a good Egyptian president. Because there used to be a guy here and uh, worked at Access Tucson, and uh, he worked for Nasser, and he always said good things about Nasser. And, uh, but the United States didn't like him and Israel didn't like him. But um, Israel's in a really bad situation there, especially Saddam Hussein was like Israel's public enemy number one. But, uh, well, I've got a, the way the economy's going and the way, you know, we, since we don't have any oil and since we, uh, this global warming is happening, there was an article uh, in the paper about if the, sea rose, I think it was 55 inches, they were calculating how much damage it would do just to the west coast of the United States, and um, it was pretty expensive. And I remember I, I went, that's what part where I went on my vacation, and like last year I went there, a couple of years, yeah, last year I guess I went there and there was hardly any beach left, because um, I've never seen it like that before, but it came back again, the sand came back again. So we have all these things that, 
You know, it's like there's a parable in the in the Bible that says that the workman didn't calculate if he had enough to finish the job, and that's basically what our these politicians have done. They've they've never really. I don't know if they've ever. They had a really good study in Germany that my sister posted on Facebook.、Uh, one of my sisters did, and and it was the German. I don't know if it's a German army or some other agency or just a bunch of scientists that got together to study what would happen if Germans, if there was a problem with the oil, because、um, and it wasn't very good. And they were talking about riots and.、Uh, And how life would change. I, I just got it today. Well, actually, I got it earlier, but my sister kind of edited it. It was kind of a long report, and、uh, so I just kind of looked at it. But you know, it's just.、Uh, I think that these plutocrats realize that it's not sustainable, and、uh, so these dumb politicians that were guided by some corrupt. Wall Street people got the legislators to change some of these laws, like、uh, the Commodity Futures Modernization Act, and they repealed parts of the、uh, what was that, the Glass-Steagall、uh, legislation, which took effect after the stock market crash in, in the 20s, and、uh, so they、uh, allowed this, these Wall Street money changers to start. Speculating and on、um, whether a stock would go up or down and things like that, and、um, and issue these bonds that and these AAA ratings and all this stuff, and and that's what got us into all this trouble. They passed these two laws, and there, there's a pretty good article about the Commodity Futures Modernization Act、uh, in、uh, Wikipedia. And、uh, Bill Clinton signed this thing, and in like the last few days of his legislation, he probably didn't even know what he was signing. But I'd really like to know what he he thought of that, and and the people that sponsored this. It was totally a corrupt thing, and it, it's amazing that Alan Greenspan didn't know about this. I think they all knew about it, and they, the insiders knew about it, and they. It's like the Enron thing,、uh, the, but it was bigger, much bigger. And nobody's going to jail over this, but、uh, because it was basically legal, but、uh, they they need to study more about how, the, how these、um, legislators got this through and who influenced them to do this. Where did this idea come from?、Uh, uh, you know, to repeal these laws to to make it possible for for this huge financial looting. You know, like pension funds and school boards got invested in these. These、uh, commodity futures, or these what do they call those、uh, default swaps, credit default swaps, and things like that, and, and they,、um, it was a huge、uh, market. It, it's like what was it, 531 trillion dollars? It's hard to believe. If you Google 531 trillion, you'll you'll come to an article in the New York Times. I posted it on my.、Uh, Photos page, my Flickr photos. If you go to my website,、uh, or if you just type in 531 trillion, it's、uh, all it's it's all these funny money derivative things, and、uh, that's just like one of the problems you know that we're facing. Plus, you know, we have this this population thing that this world population has geometrically progressed to a point where it's unsustainable. And, and we have people starving in Somalia. You know, we went into Libya to, you know, liberate these people and,、uh, you know, protect the civilians. But like, we won't go into Somalia because there's nothing there. You know, it's like got pirates there, and I guess you know, as long as they're, it's not Al Qaeda, they're not going to go there. Or, or as long as they can't grow opium, you know, that's why we went into Afghanistan as soon as. Uh, the Taliban got rid of the opium in, in Afghanistan. The United States invaded, and it's like after we lost the Golden Triangle, the Vietnam War, where they were growing the heroin in, in China and what was that, Laos and, and I don't know, but whatever the other country is. It's like a Golden Triangle of three different countries where they used to grow the opium, and、uh, it moved over there to、uh, Afghanistan. And now there's more opium than ever. 
and they have these people in the Soviet Union, you know, because that's like the border. And I think the United States government even built a bridge in Tajikistan to facilitate the opium travel. And so the it, heroin is really cheap in, in that area. There's a lot of Iranians that are addicted. A lot of Afghanis are addicted to heroin, and they, they live under bridges there, and they can't get treatment. There's, uh, there was an article in one of these papers just recently that was saying that these guys that are addicted to this heroin, there's no treatment centers, and the guys would like to get off of it, but they don't have any of these drugs that can assist in the withdrawals. These withdrawals from heroin can be really bad. And so, like, these poor people in Russia, I told you this before, they have this, um, they can't afford the heroin, so what they do is they go to the pharmacy and get these, um, I don't know what they're for, it's, it's just like a common medicine, like, um, ephedrine, but it isn't, it's something else, and they shoot this stuff up, and it, it just like rots your skin, and your skin falls off, and there's a picture of these, this girl, or a woman, uh, and uh, her, her hand is like gone, and you can see the bones, it's just, and then it's just awful stuff, and they call it crocodile, and, um, and it, uh, these people are just like so addicted. And, like, of course, Karl Marx said that religion is the opiate of the masses, and uh, so that the people are stupefied. It's like pie in the sky, and it's totally irrational. All these religions, I'd say, of all the religions, the Islamic religion is probably the most stupid because, you know, they bow down to Mecca five times a day, and, uh, you know, it's like, you know, I always wondered, you know, what, what, where's the wisdom in this book? You know, it's like, who was this guy, Muhammad? Some, some people say he had like a nine-year-old wife, and he had several wives. And, and, you know, I mean, what makes this guy, Muhammad, so smart? And, and in some of these schools these Islamic children go to, they force the children to read, to memorize this whole book. You know, it's like, these Hare Krishnas will come up to you and they'll try to give you some of their books and one of their books, this Bhagavad Gita, is like, it's like a brick. And, you know, and I'm, you know, I've heard some of the stories in there. I had a college professor who, who really thought it was so wise and great. And uh, I think I dropped out at college after listening to him because um, it just, there wasn't really any mor moral of the story. One of his favorite stories in there was where Krishna and Arjuna are on this battlefield and Krishna is saying, hey, you know, those people over there that we're fighting are, are like my brothers and families or something like that. Or, and uh, so Krishna says to, to Arjuna, you know, just kill them anyway, they're already dead. You know, you're not really killing them, you're just releasing their souls. And so Arjuna went there and started slaying everybody. You know, I mean, what kind of a story is that? I mean. It's, it's like, I, I like what they say in the Gospels, uh, you know, it's, it's a very terse stuff and, you know, Jesus Christ, first thing he did when he went into Jerusalem was to upset the tables of the money changers and then he said, you can't serve God or money, you'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one and despise the other. But the Pharisees who loved money heard all this and scoffed and that's in Luke. And that's another one of those words they don't translate correctly. They, they call it mammon. But um, the word mammon, it, it means money. In fact, in the Hebrew language, if you go to Israel and start talking about mammon, then they'll think you're talking about uh, money and uh, fortune and, and wealth and that kind of stuff. But it, it basically means money. and. Uh, Jesus um, told his disciples to go forth without carrying any money in your purse. So Jesus was really a radical. And the person who ruined the Christian religion is this guy that they call St. Paul. And most of the stuff he says is either illogical or it's trite. I mean, it's just like, you know, not very wise. It's just garbage, you know. He, tells women to cover their heads in church and that the women should be subservient to the man and 
And, you know, most of the stuff, he talks a lot about circumcision and this kind of thing, you know. And uh, it's just, um, he's the one who really ruined the church because another thing he says, and that's what these Christians always say, these so-called Christians, they, they always tell you to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead and you'll be saved. But that, that just, it's just not rational, it's not logical, and it's not true. I mean, you know, it's not going to save you. The, uh, I don't really, I mean, the only way to, you know, I mean, when you fall in love, you, you become one. And that's what the word means, you know, to be saved means to become whole. And uh, that's really probably the best feeling is being in love. It's, um, but I, like I said at the beginning of the show, I don't see much, I don't see a way out of this. And I, I think these plutocrats the, realize this, you know, the people in the CIA and anybody who has any intelligence. But So they have this new movie, and it's called Contagion. And they've really played this up, and it's, uh, they've had some intelligent articles about the reality of the, or of the possibility of this happening. And uh, there was an article in the news today uh, about uh, this new kind of mosquito that's got into this country that can transmit dengue fever, which is like a really bad flu. It'll knock you on your butt, and it kills a lot of people. And so they could, um, in fact, uh, Cuba blamed the United States for spreading dengue fever down in there. And um, so, like, if a lot of people were killed off with a virus, then, then that would slow down the problem of uh, running out of oil. It's like America and China have, have the most uh, consumption of uh, oil. But this 9-11 thing is a, a big scam. It's just, I don't know how many of you know about Building 7, but it's like the most uh, weak, weakest point. If you, it's, one of, it's the third building that came down in, uh, in, in uh, New York City that day. But this book here by David Griffin. Griffin was a professor of theology, but he uh, did a lot of studying. I mean, he wasn't, um, you know, I don't, he's a very rational person. He, he, he articulates very well the arguments for this 9-11 thing. It's like, those, I never believed those buildings that an airplane or a fire could bring those skyscrapers down and because, you know, why didn't it just fall over? And a steel frame, uh, fires have never destroyed a steel frame building. Those buildings were designed to be hit by an airplane and uh, withstand office fires. But they came straight down and, and everything was pulverized. There's an article in the paper here that uh, says as many as 60,000 people are suffering from lung cancer and other diseases traced to the toxic clouds of dust that blanketed lower Manhattan, and it's like those buildings were pulverized by bombs, and a lot of these eyewitnesses, the firemen that were there, there's, this is all over the internet, and I think the best movie about this is called Loose Change, and you can see it on the internet, but there, and there's this fireman who says that he could hear explosions, he's saying, it was just like boom, 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 floor after floor, and that's exactly what he said, and then there's other people there that were actually in Building 7, there was a man, uh, I forgot his name, but he was in the building and um, he said he heard explosions and had to step over dead bodies. And this guy was conveniently killed um, of a heart attack. Uh, you know, it's just like all these people that were mysteriously killed after the Kennedy assassination, a lot of the witnesses ended up um, mysteriously killed. So our government is... Uh, totally evil, you know, they're, they're probably thinking that they're going to go down in history as preserving the, keeping the boat afloat as long as they possibly could, but um, it's all going to hit the fan, and, and that's why I say to get out of Babylon, and Babylon is these big cities. Anyway, I don't have any more time. My name is Raquel, in order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast. Bye. <laughs>